This is my air cleaner car and it works really, really, really good, but not so much in this location. It doesn't have a good circular pattern of air in the shop right here. So what I want to do is take the casters off of it and slide it under the right wing of my table saw, pretty much where it was previously. And because it's up against this wall, it'll create a nice circular pattern of air in the shop. And that's what I want. So that means I need to make another cart for the planer to sit on. So for that, I went to SketchUp really quick and made a cantilevered cart design. So the top is going to have the planer and the bottom is going to be completely open. No front legs or anything like that to be in the way. No doors, no drawers. Just a platform on the bottom for whatever tool you want to use. I'm going to store the hybrid panto router right there for the time being. It may not end up being there forever, but it will be out of the way like that. And speaking of the hybrid panel router, I'm going to use it for all of the mortise and tenon joints for the frame. For the frame, I'm using regular 2x4s, and I picked these up at my local home center and probably spent more time than what I should have going through the pile to find three boards that are as straight as possible and have as few knots as possible. And the three boards that I do have are really nice, so I'm going to skip the jointer process and instead just skip plane both of the thickness and width dimensions on these boards with my planer. And basically all I'm trying to do is get a rectangular surface with the rounded corners removed. The resulting dimensions should be about one and three eighths of an inch thick and about three and a quarters of an inch in width. Like I said, I'm using mortise and tenon joinery for the construction, and nine times out of 10, if I screw something up, it's not because I'm operating the machine wrong, it's because I laid it out wrong. So I want to get this laid out in the orientation in which it will be in, just to get a good visual representation. So here's both of my back legs, and then here's both of my top pieces, according to the camera's perspective, and here's both of my bottom pieces. So this, will be a mortise and tenon joint, obviously. This piece right here will have a tenon going into mortises. These two will have tenons going into mortises. The tenons are super easy to cut on all of the ends, so there's no problem whatsoever. I just want to be mindful of where I lay out the mortises. Now these entire joints, both the mortises and the tenons, will be easy because I'm referencing off of this side with the fence and I can reference off of this end with the fence and everything should line up just fine. The problem, well not necessarily the problem, but the areas where I need to pay more attention to are where I don't have the same amount of, uh, or this, the same face to reference off of. So this piece on the bottom will be inset from the end just a little bit to give the side wall of the mortise a little bit more strength. So I'll have to mark the center line of that mortise. And these mortise and tenon joints will be easy top and bottom, or bottom and top because I do have this back face to reference off of for both pieces. That'll be easy. This one up here, I'll have to pay a little bit more attention to to get the center line appropriate. And then my original design called for a center one like right here on the back. But after seeing this in person at a full one to one scale, I think the top and bottom joints are plenty strong enough and this is just overkill. So I'm going to omit this one from my original design and then just use these components to make the frame. I'm starting with one of the mortises that has the least amount of reference faces and that is just that reference face. So that will go down on the table. But to help position it, I'm going to use a speed square into one of these slots that will position the board front to back. And then to position it left to right, I have the center line of the joint and a center line scribed on this table, which is also used to center the template. So, so long as I put my center line on the center point of the table, that's exactly where the mortise should be cut horizontally. And to clamp it down, I'm using the other piece that also needs a mortise as a spacer block. And we'll use a bridge piece with a clamp, like so. And then another clamp from the other side with another scrap piece of wood for a bridge 
to clamp it down. So now this piece is nice and secure and I can cut my horizontal mortise like so. To set our mortising depth, we're going to use this stop lock down here and a scale. Now both the stop lock and scale are on the operator side and the way I have the machine is kind of hard to show you. But uh, we can put the bit onto the surface of our workpiece and that represents zero. And then I can slide the stop block left and right onto the scale and lock it down on the desired depth of cut. And once I install my dust shroud, I'm ready to make the mortise. The rest of my mortises have two reference faces, so I'll use the tabletop and the fence as those reference faces. And I have a scale over here that I can reference off of my center line, and this is a two to one reduction. So if I use the width of my material, which in this case is three and one quarters of an inch, three and a quarter, if I put that on the center line and tighten it down, and then tighten this one down, that means no matter what I do if I reference off of this face all of my material so long as it is the exact same width will be centered along that center line and I previously centered the template to that center line so we should be good to cut all of our joints here both mortises and tenons uh, with the board in this orientation parallel with the bit now I have one more mortise to cut in these boards and and this runs perpendicular to the grain and if I cut it in this orientation, then I would have to set up a vertical template over here. And I don't necessarily need to do that. It's easier to set the material in place like so, and then just tilt the table 90 degrees. I can't use the same clamps that I just used on top because they will be rotated into this mechanism. So I'll clamp it to the table with regular clamps. And just rotate it into place. Lock the table at 90, and then loosen and adjust the horizontal position, or vertical position, I should say, which I was really close. That was lucky. Vertical position is established, and then finish clamping it down. Make sure the clamp isn't going to be hit at all. It's not. So now I can put my router bit at zero, and then use the stop block down here to establish the depth of the mortise. The rest of the mortises are pretty straightforward, just referencing off of the table and off the fence and are easily batched out. All of my mortises are cut and I have two different depths for my mortises. Any of the mortises going through the thickness are the short depth. Anything going through the width is the long depth. And that means I have a short and long tenon. And anytime I've got this much stuff going on with different size joinery, I always make notes on the material itself so I know exactly what the joinery dimensions are. Uh, before I get to the machine and I do that on all my pieces so I don't get screwed up so these pieces with mortises also receive a Long tenon and I have notes on my side So all four of these ends get a long tenon and then these four boards right here I have the short tenon dimension on both sides. So there's four and four more tenons here so I'm going to go ahead and set up and cut all of these tenons and the tenon part is much faster than the mortise. With the bushing inside the middle of the template, I'm cutting the mortise. I am done with all my mortises, so I could remove this bushing and replace it with a larger diameter bushing, which in this case is actually a bearing, and it rides along the perimeter. Now the perimeter is sloped. The closest towards this fence will yield a thicker tenon, and the further away you get from this fence, the thinner the tenon will get. 
I just cut a test tenon and figured out that this location for the bearing away from the fence results in the best fitting tenon. Batching out all the tenons will be really quick because I have this fence set to the appropriate width according to the scale and I can set my material in place and it'll always be centered every single time. And I have two stops on the router placement. One is in the back direction so I can push my material up against the router bit and that locates it in this direction and I can clamp everything down. And then the second depth stop determines the total plunge depth for each individual tenon. I think I need to find a bigger dust collection hose because the one I had kept getting clogged on the machine. Uh, but I think I am ready to dry assemble everything. So here we go. I think I've got a a little bit of dust in some of these joints down here, preventing them from closing up. But, other than that, successful draught run. Before uh, gluing everything together, I do want to taper these top horizontal pieces though. I want to make the cart mobile with these casters, but there's not enough surface area here. So first I'm going to glue on a block in each one of the corners, and that will allow me a lot of surface area to mount these. For the top and bottom shelves, I'm just using 3 quarter inch plywood, and I'm trying to use up some scraps. So the top shelf is going to be a consistent layer, but the bottom shelf is going to be two pieces to make a panel. And I'll just uh, glue on a scrap block on the seam and tack it in place with some brad nails. This will be centered and on the bottom side so nobody will see it. But it will stiffen up this panel and I'm using up some scraps that would otherwise not be used. Before installing the casters, I figured it would be a good time to measure, cut, and mount the bottom shelf. And if I push this all the way to the back side and center it left to right, then I can use a square to measure the cutout here. I'm 
So that turned out pretty good. Mission success. And most importantly, I got the air cleaner in a location where it's most effective. With the air cleaner cart running over there underneath the table saw, the flags hanging from the ceiling are showing circulation and I'm on this opposite wall and I can feel a nice draft.